Marquise Brown will certainly be missed in 2020, but the question is, or at least the question I'm trying to address in this video is how much? How much will he be missed and in what ways? Seriously, what, what specific ways will he be missed? That's what we're here to talk about today. It's, it's easy to say, hey, coach, he's a, he was a deep threat, someone who stretched the field. He had big playability. Got you. I understand. And I agree. He certainly was. But we're going to get try to get real specific with it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to convince you that I think it's not the big playability in terms of the bombs, the long touchdowns, that we're going to miss the most. Clearly, you know, that was a big part of his contribution in Baltimore, though. This is a week four touchdown against Denver where he pretty much just runs by the safety, which I think is Simmons, the really highly rated safety, um, who gets turned around. And also, you can remember remember his first game in the NFL. Marquise Brown had a two-touchdown, 145-yard performance in his first game as a rookie against the Dolphins. So we will miss those plays. But home runs like this one are few and far between. What I mean by that is you don't get 40-plus yard plays 12, 15 times a year. You get 20-plus yard plays 12, 14 times a year. For example, in 2021, Marquise Brown had 13 catches of 20 yards or more. In 2020, he had 14 catches of 20 yards or more. Maybe I have those two numbers backwards, but in any case, there's consistency. You know, for comparison's sake, 2021 Cooper Cup led the NFL with 30 of those. But Marquise Brown was like 16th in the league in 20 yard uh, 20 yard receptions. Um, in 2020, I think the leader was uh, Justin Jefferson with 23, but I could be wrong there. But in any case, Marquise Brown is up there in that discussion in 20 yard plays, and we will miss you know these big plays. But the ones that I think we will miss the most are the deep outs, the digs, and the deep comeback routes. They're going to be the more difficult thing to replace, not the verticals and not the bombs, like that ridiculous catch that I just showed you. You know, and, and the question that I'm going to try to address in this video, or at least bring up, is who's going to be running those routes? Rashad Bateman? Devin DuVernay? Will it be Tyler Wallace? James Prochet? Not sure. Uh, that's the question I'm, propose, I'm proposing in this video. Um, he did have 21 touchdowns in three seasons in Baltimore, which is pretty good. I think these routes that I'm going to show you tonight, though, are the more pressing need. Of course, you have to have a you have to be a vertical threat to even get make these available. You have to push this DB off vertically to be able to snap the route off on this deep out or a deep comeback or a dig. So you've got to be able to threaten the guy vertically first. That's a part of it, the nine route, definitely. If you don't have the three, the speed to threaten up top, you may not be able to get this separation. I've talked about combination, route combinations like this one multiple times. Actually released a video Sunday night showing a very similar concept to the opposite side of the field from 2020. This is using the gravity of Mark Andrews to hold this safety and this nickel defender and basically isolate Marquise Brown one-on-one -on -one with the corner up here and give him all the space from the bottom of the numbers to the sideline. You know, prior to the 2021 season, we heard a lot about Lamar can't make throws outside the numbers. You know, obviously we knew that was false. We had data. We had film evidence of that. The types of people who made those statements are the type of people who don't watch film that just parrot out whatever they hear, you know, the national news media, sports media talk about. This is the play that I'm referencing a moment ago. Um, I think he had a great game against the Vikings on deeper intermediate routes. He had impact like that. From 2020 as well. This is the same exact concept, just so you know. He's lined up next to Mark Andrews. It's just the opposite side of the formation. And again, like I mentioned, this is from 2020. Works out the same way. He gets all this space from the bottom of the numbers to the sideline. Lamar is able to get him the football because there's so much room for him to, for him to operate in. And he can threaten with the vertical. He breaks it off towards the sideline because the corner's been pushed up field. Additionally, the safety is locked on to Mark Andrews. He's not looking at Andrews right this second. He's, he's really reading the quarterback. Once he reads pass, you can see the safety position his body to totally defend Mark Andrews. It doesn't impact Marquise Brown specifically in any way, but what it does is it clears out this whole side of the field. Once Lamar sees the safety locked on to Andrews, he's then able to isolate his attention and his focus toward Marquise Brown. Get the football out here. Great play. Huge gain in a big moment. Early fourth quarter. I already covered it in a video from Sunday night. 
Um, I think, yes, will we miss the big plays downfield like the first one I showed you against Denver? Sure you will. Sure you will. But I think these are the ones that are more important, the ones that can punish the defense 14, 15, 16, 18 times a year as opposed to those 40-yard-plus plays, which you're only going to see three or four times a year anyway. He had, Marquise Brown had three plays of 40 yards or more in 2020 and four in 2021. Maybe I have those two numbers backwards, but again, you can see consistency. About three or four times a year, you get a 40-plus yard reception from him. I think these are the more important ones. You can see Lamar has come off the read with Andrews pretty quickly. This video is slowed down, by the way, in case you didn't notice, and gone to uh, Marquise Brown. That portion of the read pretty quickly. It's a two-receiver route. Again, I talked about it in a video on uh, Sunday night. You know, We've got Tomlinson on the field here at tight end. Ricard had gone in motion, so we've got max protection scheme with the running back Edwards leaking out in the flats late. We've got to, we will have uh, better athletes over here at tight end to actually run some routes and threaten the other side of the field so that those guys can't just divert their attention to Andrews and or Marquise Brown. It's a two-receiver concept, and other teams in the NFL do those things as well. Don't get me wrong. Um, at least until Bateman puts up numbers, and starts to scare teams, Andrews is going to get that kind of attention that I just showed you on the last two plays. The play from the Vikings in 2021 on the right sideline, and then that one against Tennessee in 2020 on the left sideline. He's going to, Bateman is going to have to start to scare some teams and beat those one-on-ones enough that we can then free up Andrews if we're going to put them on the same side of the field together, like the last two plays I showed you. All right, this is from 2020 as well. It's a somewhat different route, even though the break or, or the cut is at about the same depth. It's 11 personnel against the Texans. There's no play action fake. Uh, this time, as we pull this back to the beginning of the play, this time Andrews is lined up on the right-hand side of the screen in a tight alignment, all right? So this is Andrews here. And he's in a tight alignment, meaning he's close to the right tackle as he lines up. He's going to run this little drag under. Just so you know, when Andrews is in this tight alignment next to the tackle, I'm talking about within about four yards of the tackle, his route tree is pretty predictable. I mean, it's, it's usually like this, a drag, an over route. In some cases, he'll run the sit route in the middle of the field, but that's only on mesh. And on mesh, he needs another receiver next to him to be part of that mesh concept. So that then, Andrews can run and sit late in between the hashes after those two mess routes have kind of pulled the defense apart, separated them, and he can catch the ball in between the hashes. So my point is, when he's here, his route tree is kind of predictable. Um, and that, So that's one of the unfortunate things about our offense. But I have a feeling if we looked really, really in-depth at, at a lot of offenses across the NFL, you would see some things that were predictable based upon certain receivers' alignment. Um, look, I'm going to tell you something. NFL defenses have some low awareness at times. The things that I just mentioned in terms of Andrew's alignment, they were clear at this point in 2020, but they're definitely clear in 2020, 2000, after 2021. This is a classic Ravens concept. All right, you got Brown down here as the number one receiver running this deep dig or deep in. Again, Andrew's running the drag in front of the linebacker level. That's the eye candy. And then you have two clear out routes here by Sneed and Brown that are just, all they're trying to do is pull these defenders out of there. Just make them get depth. And it's mission accomplished there, okay? Additionally, the flat defender, I call him the curl flat defender, is expanded too much. He's expanded too much toward the sideline. Simultaneous to that, he's not getting hands on anyone. He's letting Boykin get a free release. It's one of my complaints about NFL defenses sometimes. Because of the rules, they don't get hands on anyone. You can see that Cunningham has even let Sneed run right by him, made no contact with him at all. you got to make contact with people, and if they call the flag, they call the flag. That guy's expanded too far. Andrew's underneath route is going to draw the attention of Cunningham, and then Brown is snapping this thing off and bringing it back to the middle of the field into all that open space. He's, he was really good at finding open space in what I would call the deeper intermediate areas. Um, and look, anytime I see Lamar get to the back of his drop, like he does here, all right, and get his foot and leg at this angle like that, I know something good is coming. 
because I know he's already planted because he recognizes what's happening and knows where he's going to go with the football. There, there's a there's an angle that you want him to be. I shouldn't say that you want him to be at that. I believe Lamar shows when he's made his read, he's definitive about it, and he understands where he's going to go with the football. It's a great throw, if you ask me. There's Andrews running the underneath, and he's going to draw the attention of Cunningham just enough to where Cunningham's effort, which is significant effort to try to tip the football, you can see he's he moved too far this way with Andrews. He should have let the flat defender take that route, but the flat defender had expanded too much as well. So you see he's he's way off here. So we could have gone we could have gone to Andrews. And that's one of the things Marquise Brown was used in combination with Andrews a lot and that opened up opportunities for him. Not saying that Marquise Brown couldn't get himself open, but the gravity of Andrews I have shown you hopefully on the last three plays assists in helping him get a little bit more open than maybe he would have been otherwise. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, that was just another example of you know, Lamar where if you give him time to make the read, he'll put the ball, football in the right location for our receivers to make a play. And, that's what, and, and let me digress for a second. That's why teams started to blitz so much in 2021. After our comeback win over the Vikings, right, which I think pushes us to 8-3 and three or maybe 8-2, and two, teams recognized what Lamar was able to do with time and space. And that was even with or without Ronnie Stanley, with our starting two running backs injured. Teams recognized what he was able to do. I don't think I recognized the reason why they were doing it. Um, I tried to explain what my thoughts were in certain videos, but teams adjusted and said, you know what, we're just going to bring, bring pressure and not give him time nor space. But anyway, I got sidetracked a little, and I will address that again. 2021 film here, week two against the Chiefs, Marquise Brown on this little deep comeback or curl against the zone. Just play action. And it looks like Lamar is looking at the safety which is Tyron Matthew, to see if he's shading you know, to this side of the field or not. He's not. The corner on Brown's side is threatened by the vertical release, again, that Brown gives you, and he gets depth. Brown checks up or sits up and takes that little 15, 16-yard out. Simple, right? We can do things like this if we protect. Look, another thing, there's another second-level defender not making contact with a receiver at all. You might say he's redirecting Brown a little bit, but not much. Why Why is he doing that? Because his eyes are on the quarterback. It's a pet peeve of mine, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, there's certain guys who should have their eyes on the quarterback, no doubt. But when everyone has their eyes on the quarterback, there's a reason why. It's because of Lamar. Because of Lamar. He's so quick, and they want to be able to contain him if he does take off running. But one of the weaknesses of it is it means you don't get hands on people, especially when you're in zone defense, because people run right by you. You give him a free release. You would certainly, if you're a Chiefs fan or a Chiefs player or coach, you would certainly like to see uh, Marquise Brown knocked off his route. Look at the uh, look at the de depth, the separation that is there from that corner because he's threatened by that vertical release. You know, is is Duvernay, Bateman, Wallace, and even Prochet are they going to be able to do this? Well, yeah, they are. You might say, well, how are they going to beat press man? Well, let me let me digress a little bit again. This is kind of a side note from a conversation that happened between Jason and I from Huddle It Up Films. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. Look at the coverages the Ravens get. We get we get quarters, we get split field calls that are zone oriented, or we get cover three. Okay, you could call this cover three right now. Defenses want because defenses want to be able to keep things in front of them and have multiple guys able to respond and pursue if Lamar scrambles. They want to be able to have their eyes on the quarterback and not have their back turned playing man. You can't play the typical man free and rush four against Lamar. You can't. If you're going to rush Lamar, you got to go blitz zero and bring a ton of heat and play that sticks coverage that I like to call it. So how does this relate to our receivers in next year, Coach? Well, I think that we're going to get the same coverages. I do. We're generally going to get corners that are lined up off. Okay? Especially if we have condensed splits. I mean by condensed split, I can pull this back to the beginning. Condensed split is this right here. We've got a condensed split like this, close to the right tackle. We're going to get, look at this, look how far off this corner is. There's no reason why Duvernay, Bateman, Wallace, or Prochet can't do this. None. They'll be able to push off and make that guy get depth. We're just not going to see a whole lot of press man because of who we have at quarterback. 
And and look, you you can't play man free a lot of times. If you remember, the, do you remember the touchdown run that Lamar had against the Titans in our playoff win in 2020, late in the second quarter? I think we were down 10-3. He takes off running from about this area of the field. Of course, it was in Tennessee. About this area of the field, takes off running, ties the game at 10, going into half. That was against man free. We're going to get a lot of coverages like this. And that's what the Bills play against us. They play quarters with zone principles. As a side note, if this corner had attacked Marquise Brown and stayed up on him, you know, we do have this secondary option for Lamar here to throw the, the post developing from the other side of the field or the flat route um, out here to Ricard. But we don't take it because Brown is wide open. The Bengals play a lot of the similar coverages as well. So we don't need guys who are going to beat press man consistently. You know, we don't. If, if teams do play press man a lot, look for Lamar to get two or three 20-yard runs in one game, and then we won't see that coverage again for a month. I want to challenge you if, if you're one of those people who thinks we see press man a lot. And, and it's okay for us to have a different opinion, but jo join my Patreon, join my data, and, and get in the database for one month you know, in July or, or August, whatever, and, and get access to the database we're creating and search the coverages because we label them all. Well, we label 90% of them. So you can see for yourself. The coverages are labeled there. I don't, I don't have the data up here in the top for this, for this breakdown. But the coverages are there. You can check them out yourself. Message me on Twitter or post something up in the comment section if you're interested. Uh, that was not a great coverage by, by the Chiefs defense. They were really soft with so many eyes on the quarterback, like I said. But conceptually, that's what people want to do. They want to make Lamar execute eight and ten play drives. Uh, that's just my analysis. You know, I don't think we're going to be um, out throwing the coverage when the DBs are off that far. Now, this is a little different. This DB is a little closer, obviously. Still got two high safeties over the top, though. And we know the Vikings were a 4-3 team. And they did play, you know, a lot of zone principles. This is just your typical quarters. And you can see Brown is pushing that DB off, gets him off balance, comes back to the football, and then is able to curl it back inside. That was a huge catch because that was first and 20, if, you, if I remember correct. Even if the corners lined up, you know, tight, athletically, they're going to be able to flip their hips and run with most receivers, whether it's Marquise Brown or not. You can see... That guy's not beat on a vertical. No, he's not beat. And the safety's clearly bracketing or playing on the inside uh, leverage of Brown. The safety's playing on the inside leverage of Bateman. We're not going to outthrow that coverage 16, 18 times a year. We're not. We can do that 16, 18 times a year to, you know, to Marquise Brown or to whoever replaces him on these route concepts. You know, maybe um, Crochet, Duvernay, and Wallace don't individually give you 10 or 12 of these receptions a year, but maybe as a group, they give you 15 or 18. That's what I think we need more of. We need to win more of these routes, not just not just the vertical uh, uh, routes, because really that's what got us in trouble in 2021, was not taking the check downs or the intermediate routes, not going after those 16, 18, 20-yard gains. But let's be real. We can't replace, well, let me put it this way. The thought process of we can't replace Brown's deep threat ability is kind of a cop-out because you can't have it both ways. Um, here's what I mean. Look at the film. Yes, we had some deep play opportunities that we took advantage of in 2021 and in Marquise Brown's career here for three years, no doubt. He had the touchdown catch I showed you in Denver in week four. He had Duvernay's touchdown on a third and 16 in Detroit the very next week on a blown cover, or, or the previous week on a blown coverage. Brown had the drop against the Chargers on the left side of the end zone in Week 6. Maybe he had a couple other drop, you know, big plays or touchdowns in Detroit in Week 3. He had two huge, beautiful catches for touchdowns in Week 5 and Week 7, both at home, one against the Colts, and then the Week 7 one against the Bengals, which was beautiful, almost like a, a play of the year type play by him and, and Lamar, if you ask me. But teams are, th those things are not going to happen with the regularity. We're not going to beat good defenses by just out-throwing the coverage. We're not. Especially when they're playing that soft quarters or split field coverage with off corners. So what I mean by that is corners with seven to nine yards depth and, and eyes on the quarterback and soft eyes on the receiver. That's not conducive to attacking them deep. I'm not saying we can't throw deep, but if you ask me, that's what got us in trouble last year was Lamar being coached and Lamar wanting to. You know, I don't know who to apply more blame to. Who cares? on getting the ball downfield deep. you know. Now, if you want to say that these throws I showed you were deep, 
then then okay, I'm 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 down with that. I'm fine with that. But we we have to be able to attack the cup the specific coverages that people play us and pushing that corner off vertically and then snapping that route back to the outside on a deep out or a deep comeback or the dig route like I showed you against Houston in 2020. In my opinion, those are the things that we need more of. So that's the more important issue is Duvernay, Wallace, Prochet, and Bateman, are they going to be able to give us what Brown did on those style routes? Not discounting the big plays because, you know, they were big plays and, and beautiful plays, you know, obviously. Um, now, the other, the other part of the issue, you're not going to be able to run those routes, any of those routes, against Sticks coverage with six or seven blitzers. You're not. If you're not familiar with the concept, that's okay. You know, six or seven blitzers and four DBs all at Sticks depth, meaning they're all lined up at the yard, line, yard to go. So if it's second and 10, their heels are all 10 yards deep. Four DBs, two safeties, two corners. And they're bringing six or seven blitzers. And all those DBs are doing is reading Lamar's face mask. It's a cheap read. They're just reading Lamar's face mask wherever because they know there's no time, right? There's no time for Lamar to look one way and then throw back the other way. So deep passes are limited unless it's just three-step and throw it up. They're limited because of the pressure that's going to be generated. And the DBs are, like I said, just basically cheating by reading the quarterback's, quarterback's face mask. We can use that against them. So, so anyway, my point is we're going to see two coverages, two specific coverages, either soft corners off coverages or we're going to see sticks blitz zero. If we get a lot of man free, we, we can beat man free, first of all, with Bateman, Andrews, some of the other weapons we've got. Okay, maybe those other guys aren't as good as Marquise Brown. Fine, whatever. But the threat of Lamar scrambling against man free is too much. You don't want to play good defense for, for two downs, get the third and seven, play man free, and then Lamar rip off a 25-yard run. That's, that's not just a first down. That destroys the integrity of your defense for at least two or three plays because you're not going to go back to that coverage. You're not. You're going to avoid that coverage when you give up a big play like that. Uh, let me know if you think I've made my point clearly in this video. The deep play threat is needed. Not discounting it. You're not wrong. If, you, you know, if that's the thing you think we'll miss the most, you're not wrong. We have a different opinion. But we're not, we're not doing that 50 times a year. We're not. We're maybe threatening it 12 to 15 times a year in terms of attacking there. We're not hitting that many deep balls. We're not, especially against good defenses and the coverages that we're going to see. And, and, and even this, let me, let, me, let me go back to the, well, let me, let me pull the video back to it, actually. If you were trying to get out of here because you thought it was done, then, then that's cool. Go right ahead. Let me pull this video back. One, one more point about the deep threat, okay? Think back to this play that I showed you. Let it run. And I'll talk about it. Hopefully this makes sense. We've got two deep threats on the field. Now that they're not beating the, the coverage, they're not beating the coverage, Boykin and Sneed, they're not beating the coverage. But that's not the point. The point is they're taking the DBs with them. Whoops. Wow. They're taking the DBs with them so this route is available. That's the design of it. So. And in this case, Marquise Brown is not the guy being the, quote, deep threat. You don't necessarily need a deep threat on every play that is going to win that matchup because, you know, we're not, we're not open here. I mean, yeah, we, could we throw this football out here and could Sneed maybe run onto it and make a great catch? Absolutely. I like Willie Sneed. But the point is you don't need a deep threat that's going to actually convert the deep ball on every play. Sometimes you just run what's called a clear-out route, which is one of the Ravens, you know, favorite concepts like I've talked about. Um, we're going to see specific coverages. Again, I'm encouraging you. I mean, obviously, I want people on my Patreon. I want people on my Discord so we can talk Raven stuff in a secure environment. And, you know, I like to get $5 a month from 100 people, whatever, of course. That's not, but point is, I want people to see the coverages for themselves so that you can understand we're, we're only getting certain, we're getting a very limited amount of coverages. And people even said that in 2019 when we had our great season offensively. They said, look, he's, Lamar's getting limited coverages because of his athletic ability. That kind of was used as a knock against him, as a slight. Uh, I'm not using it that way because I'm a huge Lamar fan. So hopefully you guys understand the point I'm trying to make. If you, if you disagree with it, then, then great. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. If, if you are looking for someone 
though, on this channel to just say, uh, we need a number two receiver, which is what Marquise Brown was because Mark Andrews was the number one. If you're looking for that type of analysis, that's, that's, that's basic. That's not me. I'm always going to try to refer to the film and try to display concepts and detail the concepts and the techniques that we need to get better at or that we need to do more consistently. Hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm at least trying to do that, okay, in this video. Um, whether, whether I'm succeeding or not, you know, you guys let me know in the comment section. I appreciate your thoughts because, as I've said multiple times before, I learn from comment sections as well and from the thoughts that people uh, put forth after watching the film. Um, I'm always going to try to refer to the film and, and use it as a basis or a foundation to make points. Hopefully, I've been able to do that. Are the Ravens going to miss Marquise Brown? Of course they are. That was kind of a silly question to use, but it was bait to get you in here. Yes, they're going to miss him, but I don't think we're going to miss plays like that first one against the Broncos as much as we're going to miss plays like the last six or eight that I showed you, the deep outs, the deep curls or deep comebacks, and the dig routes like the last one I just showed you. Let me know what you think of the video, what you think of my, some of my thoughts. Obviously, hey, I'm rooting for Marquise Brown to go have a great season in Arizona. But I'm also hoping that Duvernay, Wallace, Prochet, and Bateman are able to recreate a lot of the impact that Brown had so we're not still talking about this as the season you know, develops. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing uh, to the channel. Let me know what you think of my thoughts and ideas in the comment section.